It is a great pleasure to welcome you to the second edition of the Ulpiana Forum. This forum is built to harness the immense power of the diaspora capital in diplomatic, social, economic, and cultural aspects. In academia, the concept of the diaspora only emerged in the 1970s, but its existence and impact long preceded that. Across the world, groups have joined together through a shared identity, transforming the newfound home country and that of origin alike. We are no strangers to this. Several wars, waves of oppression, political prosecution, and economic hardship which shaped throughout centuries the migration of our country's people abroad. Over the years, they have become a pillar of our society and our economy. Our payback for this vast effort is not merely recognition, but also a commitment to fighting the binary notion that a person can only have one home. And most importantly, that if you do not meet the strict criteria for belonging, you belong nowhere. We believe the opposite, namely that one belongs everywhere and is at home in both or more countries. This forum seeks to institutionalize the long played role that our diaspora has engaged in. This conversation is happening at the most crucial time, a time of political movements that also affect the lives of the diaspora and all people living in between. What is often labeled as the far right is not always the far right. In Sweden, for example, the movement supports government spending. What these movements have in common is that they challenge the existing order and promise that a return to the past will bring greatness. This rhetoric puts many at risk because, as history shows, going back will not bring greatness. In his novel, The Leopard, Italian author Lampedusa writes, for things to remain the same, everything must change. That is, to maintain progress, we need new ways of creating it. Greatness cannot be found in the grief of past greatness, but in the co-creation of the new ones. The new also means creating new methods of engaging the diaspora. For us, this means that the diaspora must be an active member of the political, social, and system. We have allowed our diaspora to vote because we believe that the impact of the government affects many, including those living abroad, and might not spend the entire year in their country of origin. In this second edition of the Urbiana Forum, I am proud to witness the diverse participation and presentations from over 30 countries, spanning all continents and a wide range of backgrounds. I wish you all a successful and productive forum with opportunities to connect and collaborate in the future. We now seek to work together through this forum and other events to see how we can build on these efforts and further strengthen our collaboration. Thank you for being here with us on this journey. Thank you not only for being with us tonight, but thank you for showing that in the vision of this government, the inclusion of the diaspora of Kosovo is such a strong and important pillar that brings us forward in many uh, spaces. Dear Deputy Minister, dear Isa, without you we would not be sitting here tonight. Thank you for your passionate work and thank you for your creative ideas. <laughs> Distinguished activists for the cause of diaspora, ladies and gentlemen, dear participants of the Ulkiana uh, Forum, Excellencies Ambassadors, 
We are so proud to host you for our international second diaspora forum in Ghana. I'm not only the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Diaspora, but I myself was a member of this diaspora for 30 years. And you will see around us a lot of diaspora of Kosovo in these days. From my decades living in Germany, having interacted with literally thousands of my fellow citizens here and there in Germany and abroad, I have a clear understanding of how important it is that the whole country continues sending signals of true relationship with its diaspora. This morning, I just came back from Switzerland where we had meetings and gatherings with fellow citizens who are citizens of Switzerland, citizens of Kosovo, or both. This summer, our ministry has organized a music festival with hip-hop and other music with Albanian-speaking stars in Switzerland, Germany, and Kosovo. Tens of thousands of people enjoyed it. It was a huge success. It was a success because the young ones came together, the young people from here in Kosovo and the young people visiting Kosovo with their parents during summer. We have young people, we have business community, we have those who have emigrated and who are coming back when they are no longer in a working age. We have a great variety of fellow citizens who have the right that we care for them. And therefore, we have to invest continuously in our people, in the diaspora. They need to know, and they need to know for sure, that they belong to us like our citizens living here in the country. Our country is lucky enough to have a very committed diaspora with a unique connection with the whole country. To give a Inga mana, inga reo, inga kara na rama moji moji te nga koutou e mihi a tutu ta hiki nga tangata pini moji e nga iwai mihi mai kara na kai te nga koutou ta hiki. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm from New Zealand and we always begin the speech in New Zealand uh, in our language greeting the hosts and thanking them for their hospitality. So Prime Minister, Deputy Prime Minister, uh, Deputy Foreign Minister, distinguished guests, thank you very much for having me here, uh, for your hospitality. It's my first time in this country and I'm very much looking forward to uh, my stay here and to this conference. I'm delighted to have been asked to speak on the topic of harnessing diaspora engagement to transform migration narratives. Diaspora engagement is a topic I'm embarrassed to say that I've been working on for more than 20 years now. I know there are others in the room who have been on the journey for about the same amount of time. We all share, I think, that sense of being unable to take our eyes off this topic as it has unfolded from being a kind of a strange little hobby to being one of the central trends in uh, modern geopolitics. Diasporas have always been around. The nature of social groups is that they are always arguing about boundaries. We're always asking who's an insider, who's an outsider. Diasporas are the people who are both at the same time. They live in one place, but they never quite belong there. They belong in another place, one their aunt they or their ancestors left perhaps quite some time ago. But there's probably never been a human community without people who fall into this category of in-betweenness. So diasporas have always been there, but they're sometimes hotter and sometimes colder. Sometimes specific sites or rituals or dramas can galvanize these dispersed networks into action, mobilizing a sense of congregation that spans great distances. But most of the time in history, it was just too hard to keep imagining 
a dispersed community, and a far off homeland. Assimilation in a destination society was easier, especially when it was enforced by intolerant local societies and authorities with a heavy hand. In these conditions, which have persisted for most of human history, 